um, energy changes in reaction related to bond energy changes. So it means that you're going to be looking at the bond, what energy is found in the bond. And then number two, we are going to look at the um, uh, definition of heat of reaction and then uh, exothermic and endothermic reactions. We are going to look at them in detail and then try to understand them understand them better. And then we are going to look at the classification. Uh, that is uh, with the reasons. You don't just classify. If you say it is endothermic, why do you say it is endothermic? If you say it's exothermic, why do you say it is exothermic? So that's what you are going to look at. Activation energy. Here is a, a very big, there is a very big point which you need to know uh, because some students try to confuse the activation energy and kinetic energy. So students and try to energy. confuse uh, them. So another one is uh, we're going to look at the graphs. We are going to try to interpret them. We're going to try to interpret them and then see exactly uh, what is really happening. Why do you say this this is endothermic graph, this is exothermic graph. So all those are, we are going to look at them so that we understand them, them better. Okay. When there is a reaction, there must be heat either absorbed or released. When heat is absorbed, then we will say that that reaction is endo. We will see it. And when heat is um, released, then it means that that reaction is exo. When you say exo, it means out. Endo means in. In, you are taking in. Exo, you are taking out. Okay. Energy is absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. Whenever there is um, uh, a reaction, even if you are fighting, there will be some energy absorbed. One must release the punch, one must absorb the punch. So th th there must be an absorption and there must be uh, a release. So one must release, one must absorb. So if there are two chemicals, one must absorb, one must release. And then the total... Uh, how much is released, how much is absorbed, then we will know that the reaction, the whole reaction is either endothermic or exothermic. Uh, for example, uh, you have reaction uh, reactants A and B. You combine them and then you form the uh, uh, products C and D. Uh -huh. What will happen? The reactant particle need energy so that uh, they need energy, yes, so that the existing bonds it could be covalent bond, it could be ionic, it could be uh, metallic, any kind of bond which is there between these particles can break. They will need energy so that you can break those bonds and then after that you will form a product. So for a reaction to take place, energy must be present so that they can break down the bonds and then a reaction can take place. Um, energy is released by particles as new bonds form when the products are, are being produced. So now, when the, the energy is released by particles, then it means that uh, some particles are going to use this energy to form the new bonds. As bonds are being uh, broken, energy is released. Uh, look at this. A reaction of uh, petrol. Petrol will produce heat. It will produce fire, but you, 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 petrol cannot burn without fire. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Ah, you, you, you have a petrol. Petrol, if it is just there, it, it cannot burn unless you ignite the petrol so that it can burn to produce more fire. So petrol to burn, the reaction to take place, it will require energy. That is the energy you're talking about. But now, once the energy, the reaction starts, now the energy is too much in there. Now the reaction starts to continue, and then more energy is released. Now we subtract the energy we applied, and then we call, we know that either it is endothermic or it is exothermic. So whenever bonds are formed, energy is either released or it is uh, it is um, uh, absorbed. Yes. So now we are saying that change in energy. How do you calculate the energy, the enthalpy, uh, the H or delta H or change in, in, in H? Uh, this is um, energy change, uh, enthalpy. So it's equal to energy of the product minus the energy of the reactants. So now if it was petrol, yes, you, you, you ignite it. 
the amount of energy you used, yes, as the reactant, that is the initial, yes, minus the amount of uh, energy uh, you produced at the end, at the end of a uh, burning process, there is amount of energy which has been released. So if you bring that amount of energy which has been released at the end, minus the amount of energy you put in, then you get what you call the enthalpy change. And then we will know either this will be negative or it will be positive. It's like a business, you put in capital and then after that you get the profit. But profit, how do you calculate the profit? You're gonna say what you, you, you have uh, gathered, what you have got uh, at the end of the business, minus what you put in and then you get the profit. That's it, it's the same story here. Eh? Energy change, what you, uh, you produced, minus what you put in, then you get the energy change. Guys, don't forget this. Sometimes we say that uh, uh, energy of the product minus energy of the reactants. It's the same thing. Uh, if you find equations like this, it means that uh, enthalpy change. And then sometimes you say uh, energy final minus energy initial uh, is still is, is the same uh, story. It's just a different uh, way how we can express these um, uh, equations. Or we can say, um, you can write it uh, in this way Yes, or you can write it uh, in this way. Substitution will make you earn a mark. So it means that the final, you substitute it nicely as the final product or final uh, energy and minus the initial. Make sure that you substitute it nicely and read the question nicely so that you can uh, obtain the information which is uh, being asked nicely. Then now let's look at uh, the types of reaction types of reactions. We say that number one, we have what you call the exothermic reaction. Don't make noise. Okay, let's continue. And then you're saying that um, endothermic reactions, reactions uh, uh, which uh, result in absorption of energy. So when you, 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 you have absorption of energy, when energy has been absorbed, then it means that is endo, it goes inside. Endo means inside. Thermic means uh, temperature or heat. So it means that heat has been absorbed inside. Okay. Now, note, you need to know about this. More energy is released when new bonds form than is absorbed when existing bonds break. I repeat, more energy is released when new bonds form than is uh, absorbed when the existing bonds break. Then it means that when there is a uh, 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 bond formation, more energy is what is released. And then when there is bond uh, breakage, it means that uh, more energy is what is yeah, less energy is released. More energy is uh, absorbed when the existing bonds break than is released when the new bonds form. So we are seeing that the energy is, is, is absorbed when the existing bonds yeah, break. It means that you require more energy to break. You require more energy, you require some energy to break the bonds. Yes? And then here, you don't require energy to, 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 to form the bonds. That's why more energy is released. And then here, more energy is absorbed. You require more energy so that you can break those bonds. Yes? Um, we will see these ones when we go to the, uh, the, the graphs so that you can understand it uh, more, more, more and more accurately. Uh, let's look at uh, exothermic uh, reaction. When you talk about exothermic reaction, look at uh, this uh, reaction. You have the, the enthalpy change uh, of the reactants must be greater than the enthalpy change of uh, of the product therefore the enthalpy is always negative um okay uh, the enthalpy change uh, of this reaction for example uh, let's 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 uh, use let me use this um equation as i'm explaining this okay if you are starting with the core which is carbon you add the oxygen there, then you produce carbon dioxide. Some heat is released here. Yes, it's, it starts to burn. Yes, so 
the products, the products will have the energy, the ash which you, you get will have less energy. That's why if you try to burn them again, the energy is no longer there. Yes? Uh, the energy in the ash will be less than the energy which was there in the coal. That's why you're saying that the reactants, uh, the reactants will have more energy than the product. Because now we are saying that the enthalpy change is product minus reactants, and then now the reactants are bigger than the products, then the enthalpy change must be negative. That's why you have a negative answer here. So whenever the, the, the enthalpy change is negative, then the reaction is exothermic. I repeat, and let me repeat it again. Uh, and then me make it uh, more clear so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> We are here. We are saying, I'm repeating, that if you have a, a reaction whereby the products have less energy and the reactants have more energy, it means that energy has been released. You start with a high energy and then you end up with the low energy, then it means that there will be where some energy has been lost somewhere. So now, if you have a reaction like this, yes, you have a reaction like this, and then you have coal combined with oxygen, then you have carbon dioxide, then it means that some energy has been lost as heat. So when some energy has been lost as heat, what will happen? Then it means that the reactants will have more energy, and then the products will have less energy. And then if you subtract the products from the, um, you subtract uh, products minus the reactants, then it means that the answer is going to be negative. Why? Because the reactants are bigger than the products. And then the enthalpy change is going to be negative. That's why we say that the net energy leads to the surrounding in, um, in the form of heat, that heat, uh, heat is released to the surrounding. The net energy, some energy has been released to the surrounding and then makes the products to have less energy. Hence, the reaction becomes exo because energy has been released to the surrounding. So, delta H negative is always an exothermic reaction. I repeat, delta H or change in enthalpy, whenever it is negative, we say that that reaction is exothermic. Uh, if you look at this um, uh, graph, it's trying to explain what really happened in in the in the uh, exothermic reaction look you start with a, a high a high if this is zero if this is zero this is two this is four this is six this is eight this is ten you find out that uh the products this is the product because you start from here then you go you have to overcome the activation energy we are going to explain that and then you you, you end up here the products so the the reactants have more energy you see here is higher and then the the the, the, the products the, their energy is what is low compared to the reactants so it means that uh-huh where is this difference this difference the amount of energy which has been lost to the surrounding which we call change in energy or delta h or change in enthalpy so if they ask you to calculate the enthalpy change graphically or from the graph then you find this point the final product you note it maybe it's two and then the initial which is uh maybe it's four so it's two minus four then you get the answer which is maybe two but in this case because two minus four is is equal to uh, uh two which is a negative so the magnitude is two Negative means that it is exothermic. It released some energy. So that's why you see it here that uh, delta H, uh, delta H is 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 less than uh, zero, or oh, zero is greater than the delta H. So the answer must always be negative. This is A, and then you are saying that A is reactance. I accept this is a reactant, but it's a reactant for the forward reaction. If I'm going like this, then A is going to be a reactant for the forward reaction. We're going to be talking about 
forward reaction and reverse reactions in chemical equilibrium but if you don't know what you're talking about then uh, chemical equilibrium is going to be a problem for you so now we are saying i'm repeating now a, a this a is a reactant for forward reaction we call this a is is is, is a reactant whatever is here is a reactant but for a reaction which goes like this wonderful but we say product it can also be a product for a reverse reaction now if i'm starting from here and then i come back like this now this one is gonna be a product for a reverse reaction i repeat for a, if they ask you identify the product they have not told you identify the product for a reverse reaction no they if they say identify the product or identify the reactant identify the reactant you got you just have to give me for a forward reaction that a reactant is this and the product is this unless they have specified that identify the reactant for the reverse reaction saying that unless they say that identify the reactant identify the reactant for the reverse reaction then i'll say that okay because i'm reversing i'm starting from here then i go back so this one becomes the reversing reaction so it becomes this is the reactant for the reverse reaction and then this is the reactant for the forward reaction <clears throat> b product so b is a product for the forward reaction so if i started from here and i go like this then this becomes becomes what it becomes the product for the forward reaction but we say uh reactants for the reverse reaction so if i reverse it then now b becomes the reactant for the reverse reactions Okay, then we are looking at C. C is what's called the activation uh, complex. Yes, C becomes the activation complex. Before the reactants form products, they must form what you call the, 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 the activation complex. Yes? Um, without a catalyst, then it is much more higher. With a catalyst, uh, it is a little bit lower. We will explain why these are... Uh, come like this when you go to the factors affecting the rate of chemical reaction so activation complex it means what does it mean it means um uh for example uh-huh let me say loretu is going to fight with a b way uh -huh. so when they are going to fight what happens they don't just fight no there is a time when everyone has energy and you see that even the face has changed yeah whoa now you know that yeah Mm. so they're about to fight then when the time when this one brings a blow and then also this one brings that time before collusion but just towards collusion yeah that is the activation complex so now you have a and b they react when they react they are going to react there's a time when the bonds are the reactants are almost together and there is some attraction between the two products so, so we call that one activation complex the moment they touch each other now they exchange then they form the what the products but to form a product you need a specific amount of energy you don't just you can provoke someone this provoke one two three but can't fight but the moment yeah the moment uh the energy is enough then they fight so activation complex uh it is that period when the bonds are almost linked then the activation energy that's the energy uh, uh, uh the reactants must have so that they can convert into products so without that energy they cannot uh, convert into products Me meaning that without that energy these two people cannot fight until they reach that energy then they start to to fight um uh, then you are saying that uh, activation uh, complex uh, with a catalyst. When there is a catalyst, you know that, uh, for example, uh, Abiwe wants to, to fight with uh, Loretu, and then what happens? Eh? Eh, Tabiso comes and says that, eh? Molefe, Molefe, uh, Mofukenge comes and they say that, ah, ah, well, nah, uh, Abiwe, you can't beat this uh, Loretu. You can't beat her. Then what happens? Uh, now Tabiso starts to, to, to bring in, so it means that Tabiso makes the energy to be fast. Eh? So the activation energy to, 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 to be a little bit lower. And then they will fight. Instead of fighting after maybe 10 minutes, they're going to fight within three minutes. And then the fight is already there. So the activation uh, complex with the catalyst tries to lower the energy. That's why you see it here. That the one with the catalyst, it is lower. And then the one without catalyst is a little bit higher. And then um, uh, the endo 
endothermic reactions. When we talk about endothermic reactions, uh, risk reactions, you'll find out that uh, it is the reverse for the exothermic. Uh, the reactant uh, energy is less than that of the product. It means that the products get, they have more energy than the reactants. Meaning that the activation energy, no, 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 no. Meaning that the energy uh, has been absorbed. The energy has been absorbed. And then the enthalpy change is always positive. Why? Because the products have more energy than the reactants. If you say uh, products minus the reactants, you get a positive, a positive answer. That's why you say that uh, delta H or change in energy is greater than zero. It means that it will never be negative. When it's negative, then we say it is exothermic. And then you're saying that uh, here is the formula whereby you say that um, uh, products minus um, uh, reactants. Yes, obviously, the answer you get, the answer you get here must be um, greater than zero, which means that it must be positive. Net energy is absorbed. Since you, you, you have reactant A and then you have product B, then product B has, has absorbed the energy, then obviously the energy is going to be a little bit higher. So energy is absorbed from the surrounding in, uh, in the surrounding in the form of heat. And then what will happen? Uh, where, what is the best example here? Uh, uh, the best example here uh, for exothermic, exothermic, endothermic, Yes, you, 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 in winter, you try to bath for, uh, warm water. Yes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So when you bath warm water, you feel a little bit hot. Yeah, you feel a little bit hot. It means that the body has um, absorbed the, uh, the heat. Wonderful. That is endothermic. You have absorbed it. Hey, but okay, don't cover yourself. Leave yourself just like that. After some one minute, what will happen? Now you start to feel cold. What does it mean? Now the reaction has reversed. Now the heat has, is being released to the surrounding. Now it becomes exo, exothermic. Now it means that you are releasing the heat to the surrounding. So the reaction can be reversed. You take in. If you don't take care, then it reverses. Or if it becomes full, then it reverses, then it comes back. When you eat, another example, when you eat, just eat. Eh? You eat, you, you, you take in energy, you take in energy. So we say that that is uh, endo. But what will happen? What will happen? If you overeat, then you regurgitate, you start to vomit. Then now that is exo, you release out. After releasing, whenever you release, you feel much more better. That's how it is. And whenever you, you, you take in, you feel uncomfortable. That's why when people over it, they feel uncomfortable. But once they raise, they feel much more better. There are so many examples where you have these things in the daylight. When you go to the toilet, you are exothermic. You are releasing the, the, the heat. Isn't it? After the toilet, you feel much more better. You feel happy. And everything is moving smoothly. I'm not saying this embarrass you, but that's what is happening. And these are the reactions. These reactions, you know them, but sometimes you don't take a keen eye to see that these reactions are happening in real life. Okay. Example is, now we are going back to the chemical way. Example is dissolving ammonium nitrate. If I was at school, uh, we would have done these reactions and then we see them. And unfortunately, uh, corona is the problem. Okay. We are saying that example is ammonium nitrate in water. When you dissolve ammonium nitrate in water, you will find out that the reaction is um, is 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 um, uh, endothermic. It takes in heat. Okay. Before I explain this, I'm going to ask you.